Budget Office announces federal deficit to reach $2.3 trillion in 2021. The federal budget deficit will reach $2.3 trillion in fiscal 2021, even if Congress does not pass another economic bailout bill, which is just below the $3 trillion level it reached last year. But it's still the second highest deficit since World War II. The Congressional Budget Office announced that. Still, the updated estimates show a better financial picture for the government than the Budget Office predicted last fall. The Budget Office now sees the US economy recovering faster than it had previously anticipated, revitalized by incentives and the ability of American businesses to adapt to the epidemic. The 2021 deficit forecast grew compared to the office's September estimates, largely because of the $900 billion economic aid bill approved by Congress in December. However, because of faster-than-expected economic growth that is predicted to increase tax and other federal income, the projected deficits for the next few years have been further reduced. These estimates are likely to bolster President Biden and Congressional Democrats' efforts to accelerate the passage of a $1.9 trillion aid package that includes money to fight the coronavirus and aid to combat households and businesses. Republicans objected to the size of the package, saying that at this point in the recovery there is no need to spend that much and will further inflate the federal deficit. But Democrats who are preparing to go through most of the package as best they can without Republican support will cite CBO's predictions as justification for further aid. Still, the report highlights how much the US borrowed to finance all its spending. The Budget Office now expects the total federal debt to reach 105% of the country's economy by 2030 just below the 109% forecast for September, as a result of the pandemic recession and trillions of dollars in federal spending to combat it. Total debt grew more than the size of the country's economic output last year. Officials at the Budget Office said another series of reports released Thursday afternoon would show that several federal trust funds, including Social Security, and the country's highways are expected to remain in funding for years longer than the office projected in September. The report also predicts that the deficit will drop below $1 trillion for a short time in fiscal years 2023 and 2024 and rise again in the second half of the decade. From 2021 to 31, the deficit is estimated to be an average of $1.2 trillion per year. Dollar collapse is just beginning. After the first soaring, the dollar has been steadily falling since the COVID-19 outbreak hit the US last March. It fell about 10% to 12% relative to America's major trading partners and fell to its weakest levels since early 2018. As measured by many of the broad dollar indices, more will come. We are only in the third round of a nine-shot baseball game based on a widely unpopular prediction. I made in June that the dollar's value was down 35% by the end of 2021. If this prediction comes true, the first year in office would provide an important exclamation mark for Joe Biden, the 46th President of America. There were three main reasons why I claimed the dollar would fall. One, a sharp widening in the United States current account deficit. Number two, the rise of the euro. And number three, a Federal Reserve dollar that would do little in response to any weakness in the United States. In each of these numbers, I have more faith in today's weak dollar call than six months ago. Consider the following. As expected, the current account deficit, the largest measure of trade as it includes investment income, worsened and rose 1.2% points to 3.3% of gross domestic product 
in the second quarter of 2020, and an additional 0.1% point in the third quarter. 3.4% the change in the second quarter was the biggest erosion at record level and the deficit at its current level is the worst since the end of 2008. At work, there is a deterioration in domestic savings caused by explosive COVID-related increases in the federal budget deficit. When a nation lacks accumulation and wants to invest and grow, it must import excess accumulation from abroad to square the circle, running current account deficits to attract foreign capital. Not surprisingly, the identity is kept. The net domestic saving rate combined depreciation, adjusted savings of businesses, individuals and government sector fell below zero in the second and third quarters for the first time in a decade. From a positive rate of 2.9% in the first quarter to negative 0.9% of 3.8% in the second quarter, it was also the biggest quarterly decline in record. The fall in domestic savings in the second quarter was largely the result of the $2.2 trillion CARES Act aimed at providing financial relief during the COVID-related lockdown. While the epidemic and aftershocks are still raging, another $2.8 trillion in financial aid is being announced. $900 billion previously signed in December 2020 and another $1.9 trillion was proposed by Biden. Combined COVID aid packages total $5 trillion or 24% of 2020 GDP. While not traditional stimulating, this financial injection breaks all modern records by a wide margin. As a result, the domestic savings rate should fall below zero and put even more intense downward pressure on the already wide current account deficit. Although the international imbalance, as I argued in June, did not break the previous record of minus 6.3% in late 2005, it is likely to approach. Euro, the rebound of my negative dollar search, was all about Tina, no alternative. In a follow-up comment, I challenged this claim by trying to create a positive case for the Chinese renminbi and the euro, while at the same time hailing precious metals and even cryptocurrencies. Gold prices, on the other hand, rose for a few months in June and July, but then withdrew these increases over the balance of the year. It was a different story for cryptocurrencies. I did not know what would happen to Bitcoin, which has risen for a fall since June, or two and a half the spike at the end of 2017, at the time was portrayed as one of the largest speculative bubbles in history. Federal Reserve, when the current account deficit comes under pressure, one might think that the central bank will come to the rescue by tightening monetary policy. This is, of course, not the case for today's Fed. By adopting a new average inflation, targeting regime in August, the Fed gave a strong signal that it will move later, not earlier, to counteract any increases in inflation rates. The so-called modern monetary theory cannot go to save the dollar either. Yes, debt and deficits may not work in a low inflation, low interest climate. A very bright theoretical breakthrough, but saving or absence still matters. As the US becomes increasingly dependent on foreign capital to compensate for its growing domestic savings shortage and the Fed's open-ended quantitative easing measures create an enormous burden of excess liquidity. The further sharp weakening of the dollar seems more compelling than ever. An economy on the verge of an ongoing pandemic and double-bottom recession leaves the Biden administration no choice but to opt for another round of major financial aid. This result will have consequences for any economy. For short-term savings, it means a weaker dollar. If you make any investment or legal decision, it is advised to consult an expert before making this decision.